Come on, guys, let's go. Jumping in. I get very, very chatty and attention seeking. <laughs> I'm drunk. <laughs> Come sit down, guys. What <laughs> litres. Um, yeah! yeah! Hey, guys! My name's Jackson Boxer, the proprietor of Brunswick House in Vauxhall, London. Straight up. Brunswick House is a marvellous historic building. It was built in about 1770. It was a working man's club, a music hall. In the 90s, it was a squat. They used to have really famous squat raves here. Sadly, I was too young to ever make it to those. Really, we didn't have very much money. We had about £1,000 each. We'd saved up in tips. And we used it to buy a coffee machine and a couple of fridges and some mugs. And that's how Brunswick House started. It had about seven seats. It was a very sweet operation, two brothers working side by side. We both have a deep affinity for this most delicate and delicious of all the offal organs. So these are going to get a very simple dredge and some flour, tossed in a pan full of butter. And we're going to just serve those on toast. These are calves' brains. Very young calves. I'm just going to chuck a bunch of capers in there. I'm just going to do some toast for those quickly. Yeah. I think it's really delicious. It's only because you think it's brain that it's weird. There's nothing in the world that you can't make taste good by frying it in butter. I think yeah. this is like <laughs> one of the eternal truths of good French cooking. We've got some beautiful partridges here. It's one of the darker game birds and more interesting as a result. And it's going to be served with a game stock. So this is made from the bones of partridges, ducks and some grouse. There's a very kind of fruity tone to it. It's cooked. Let's go. And partridge. Oh, wow. That is next level. And finally, we've got a dish which is a really inspired creation of Gina's. I think it's absolutely amazing. It's a pear tart tartin. So we've got these beautiful pears that we've poached with a little bit of vanilla with puff pastry that's been made with cheese. And that's ready to go. We do sit down once or twice a week at least to discuss the menus we're building together. And we do work very closely on the dishes. It's like proper collaboration. It's fantastic. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Start our out. Let's go get drunk. No, it's, it's out. Is it out? We're ready to go. Yeah, I'm cool. Go get changed. Right. Jeremy works with me and Frank as the kind of fellow director of our company and our great collaborator, and works on Frank's in Peckham and is helping out on Rita's, which started as a nine-month residency in Dalston and is about to move to its new home on Mayor Street. You're looking well. How's uh, fatherhood? Portugal. Portugal. Yeah, fatherhood didn't do that. No, no. but that's great. <laughs> the, the man no, suddenly he's already like, like that. that. Yeah. Whenever anyone says how's fatherhood, they basically mean you look like shit. <laughs> look, look, fatherhood. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Jeremy had the great pleasure of having children at pretty much the same time. He's someone whose shoulder I can quietly weep on when the responsibility I've taken on in bringing life into this world gets too much. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> this is uh, Amal Rajan, the editor of The Independent. Then, uh, God, only the coolest people in this place. <laughs> <laughs> how was your honeymoon? It's a mini moon. Shit. A mini moon. It was raining. It was English. It was you wait till you're in Jamaica in January. <laughs> <laughs> Reggae rum and sex. She's right? not even going to be there. That's just you. That's just you on the beach by yourself jacking off. I'm entertaining myself. Oh, God. <laughs> it's so good to see you. It's such a shame oh, you can't God. join us tonight. Okay, guys, let's go. So we're just leaving Brunswick House now, and we're all starving. We're going to head down to Silk Road in Camberwell, which is hands down mine and my brother's favourite restaurant in London. Guys, let's roll. We're, we're not even. We're shooting no. porn. <laughs> <laughs> They always think that when they see you. <laughs> Sam, how you doing, mate? Oh, we barely need to look at it. Can we get full beers? Straight up. OK, cool. We're ready to go. So we get some ox tripe and chili and cucumber and sauce. Can you bring us some fried dumplings? We basically ordered the whole menu. Everything here is delicious. Cheers. Silk Road just has this incredibly deep place in my heart. I don't think there's a restaurant in London that cooks with more soul than that place that I feel more of a spiritual affinity to. Me and my brother both. Did they not powder your head, Jeremy? Because you're, you're ruining the lighting in here. Do we have some foundation for his head? <laughs> My name's Tim, and this is the Silk Road Restaurant. We've been running this business about five years. It's a family business. Oh, it's just the best. And then that very lively chili. Beautiful. We eat out a lot, from the high end to the low end of gastronomy, and I've got a very easily jaded and very easily bored palate. Something's like this, they're so lamby and gamey. Home style cabbage is my favourite cabbage in London. I love this aubergine, it's so sugary sweet. The place where I'm from is called Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region, and uh, that's a very mixed place. We've got Han people, Uyghur people, Kazakh people, so that means the food is very mixed as well. So they just delivered the medium plate chicken, which is the main event, which is amazing. It's a, it's a whole chicken. 
jointed up with a big cleaver, chucked on the grill, and then braised in this amazing broth. And then they make these, these are the best noodles in London. Thick, handmade, chewy like leather. If you wake up with a hangover, if you wake up feeling ill, this is the one thing you crave more than anything. Jackson is a very young, promising, successful man. Yeah, yeah, we've been, we've been, uh, <laughs> we've been. He's my friend, he's my friend. <laughs> yeah, very, very nice guy. Yeah. yeah, they have to, after they finish the dinner, they have to pay me. Yeah. <laughs> I hope one of you is professional enough to have bought a bottle opener. Uh, no. <laughs> You're kidding. Poor Jeremy. Crying in the corner. <laughs> Couldn't take the heat. So after Silk Road, we, we went to Sager and Wild, which purely has its ambitions based on wine. Sunday evening is a hot night there for catching uh, drunk chefs. Is Seth quite a boozy lifestyle? No, no, it's incredibly sober, actually. <laughs> <laughs> We're all pretty straight edge. All of us at various stages of our lives have already hit rock bottom to such an extent we've had to learn to balance the very hard way. I have uh, never heard that, mate. <laughs> 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 We're on record here. We're on record here. Don't shut up. Shut up. Frank is by far the much better drunk. Tell us about how you nearly ruined Christmas getting arrested buying a McDonald's breakfast. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas Eve, wasn't it? It was Christmas yeah, Eve. Yeah, Christmas Eve in the cells. So guys, here we are at Sager and Wilds, and let's hope they got some really delicious bottles open, because I want some wine. They do, they do. What are you doing? You look great. Look at your beautiful place, it's amazing. <laughs> We need everything that's delicious. <laughs> My guy has the best palette for wine of anyone I've ever met. What he's done here is assembled the most exciting wine bar I've ever been to. I think I'm gonna rent the flat upstairs. You know that? Come sit down, guys. What are we drinking? Everything. Oh, I got oomphy stuff today. Yeah. Oomphy Give stuff. us some. Can we start with some white though? Yeah. There's a new one. Yeah. New one. What you got? It's Domen Hulo. Yeah. And Hulo is the boss. This is Charlotte. She's the wild in Sager and Wild. This uh, husband and wife business, like the original mum and pop store. He said this place sells wine. We opened two months ago now. We're trying to make very good wine available to everyone. This is the one I was telling you about. It's extraterrestrial. This is so aromatic. It's like, I mean, yeah. Burgundy is my love. Yeah. So instead of going to a shop and spending 200, you can have it here by the glass for sort of 15 quid. Sounds expensive, it's not. It's beautiful. Michael, Charlotte, Aurelie, it was so wonderful to see you. So, guys, Daniel Willis. Hi, hey, Mr. Clove Club himself, uh, the godmother of my oldest child, one of my favourite people in the world, and Johnny Smith, his wife. Yeah. Life partner. Hello, darling. Hi, darling. <laughs> the ethos of the Clove Club is essentially British, classic, modern, uh, fu Fun. fucking cool. Fucking vibes. We're making our Morandina's baby, which is uh, Aperol and Moscato sweet white wine. The Clove Club has become probably pretty much my favourite restaurant in London. Johnny and Daniel have created a beautiful space, really considered and artful. What's the smoking whiskey in there? Yes, the Freud. It's the Freud. Okay, let's fight. It's a vodka. It's Glenn's. I say him telling Glenn's in that one. Cheers, guys. Daniel and I came to London together, so, you know, we've Not together, friends. together. Sometimes. And then we got to know Jackson just through Frank's Campari Bar uh, in Peckham. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> We're just talking about you. <laughs> now it's like one big happy family. Big, pretty. big happy food family in London. Oh, I love these guys so much. They're so much bigger than me and so much better than I'll ever be. It's amazing. Woo. Come on, guys, let's go. Jumping in. Let's chariots, on to chariots. No, no, Brunswick has <laughs> This is where I had my first rebrand dance ever. The sports bar. It was 50p in a pint. Jeremy. <laughs> Let's keep this family friendly. I'm so up for cooking some pig right now. Yeah. I just kind of wait. We're back home and we're going to cook everyone dinner and get wasted. I just want to see. Yeah! Whoa. Come on, G, let's oh, go cook let's dinner. Go. Oh, I got my wife here. I got that uh, wasting right. ready for me to go, like Thunderbirds. Nice. It's like fucking Thunderbirds. So we're gonna make a snack for everyone. It's exactly the kind of food that we like to cook late at night when we've had a bit too much to drink. We've got some beautiful trotters. We're gonna dredge them in like breadcrumbs, then deep fry them. 
make a little pig's foot bun, and then finish it off with a sriracha, like a roast garlic and chili aioli we've made. That is filthy. Wow. This is a thick, sticky syrup we've made out of all the juices that the pork cooked. It's basically like meaty Haribo. That's how I like to think of it. It's really rather good. I think by that point, we were all hammers. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Girls. I'm amazed I still have both hands. I mean, operating that deep fat fryer at midnight after the amount we drunk, I'm just relieved I'm talking without third degree burns here. It's a uh, deep fried pig's trotter. Yeah, 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 you want to try that? Uh, guys, this is Will. Uh, nice. one, one of the wine shop guys. We have got a little place up by the power station and Tom is the founder of wine shop, the wine shop. I'm just a sort of, you know, just a velvet ridden Pretend. Debenhams. Check that out, man. <laughs> hey, guys! I got the first round of pig's trotter rolls here if anyone wants one. Fucking. Okay. Take as much as you like. We got more to come. Brady, I need your verdict most of all. You're the sandwich queen these days. <laughs> um, guys, can we do some serious graphics? Yeah. Awesome. Oh! That is a thing of beauty. Beauty okay. and terror at the same time. Yeah, you've got to bear in mind. This harks back to the days when grappa was for the peasants and yeah. wine was for the, for the nobles. Yeah. And this is the peasants saying, fuck you. Yeah, like, this As we in, we it. are saved the best shit for ourselves. At the same time, that is noble. That is a noble drink. Down to a noble drink. Yeah, boys, to a noble drink. To a noble, drink. To a noble peasant's drink. What a pleasure. That's absolutely timeless. Absolutely exquisite.